Thanks for tuning in to Retiring Well. We're going to be diving right into Social Security and the potential cost of living adjustment for 2025. What about with health insurance? The, uh, you got COBRA, marketplace insurance, what's the appropriate answer? And then making your money behave. That sounds a little, little odd, but uh, you want to be paying attention to that. And then lastly, savings for retirement with very little money. How do you accomplish that and have a successful retirement? So all this and much more coming up right here, right now on Retiring Well. Retiring Well. Brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring well, plan to retire well. Let's start off here with the show this week talking about maybe one of the most talked about topics that's out there, Social Security. And let's dive in a little, little bit further with Social Security and talk about COLA. And maybe what does that look like for this upcoming year of 2025? What are some projections that are out there? Now, first, let's back up and understand what is COLA? What does that mean? C-O-L-A. So that stands for Cost of Living Adjustment. So this was enacted by legislation in 1973, it was designed by the government to help Social Security keep up with the cost of living. Now, it's not always an exact science, and sometimes it may feel like inflation is rising faster than what your COLA would be as if you're collecting it, but they're using different methods to calculate this. Prior to this legislation in 1973, it was something that just was enacted and decided upon by legislation under the Congress. There was not actually a factor that did that, so things have changed since then. Since 1975, when this all took effect, these adjustments actually hit in June from 75 to 1982. Since then, they actually are effective December, and you'll see them on your January payments. So when we look back over the history of COLA since 1975, you'll see on this chart here, there's varying things that have been out there. Some years have actually been zero where they've given us no increase to our Social Security cost living adjustments. In some years, back in the late 70s, early 80s, when inflation was very, very high, many of you may remember those years where mortgage rates were you know, 15, 16, 17% and stuff like that, you had some double digit COLA increases in there. Last year, for our 2024 Social Security, so remember, so that started or it was kind of effective December of 23, that was at 3.2%. So this year, the Senior League, and they're a nonpartisan uh, group out there that studies this sort of stuff and kind of multiple times a year will release projections on this. Currently, they're estimating for 2025, and there's their July estimate, they're at 2.63% is what they're expecting that COLA cost of living adjustment to be for your individual Social Security. Now, it likely will change slightly as we get closer to that. Could be a little better, could be a little worse, um, but again, that's where it's coming in right now. And they do a nice job of estimating that. It's usually fairly close to what that actually is when the year comes around. So what does that mean to you? So right now in the United States, the approximate average Social Security for an individual received gross is $1,862. That's what the average individual receives before taxes are withheld, before Medicare Part B comes out if you're uh, 65 and older, or having um, any of that sort of withholdings come out. So if we get a 2.63% increase, that would be the equivalent of the average person getting a $49 a month increases Social Security. Again, gross, before taxes, before the Medicare Part B, any of that sort of stuff comes out. So that's right now where things would land with that. Now you may be saying, boy, $49 a month, what am I gonna do with that? Obviously, it increases your Social Security a little bit. Hopefully it helps keep up with some of the inflation, some of the rising costs and things like that. So COLA, when you hear of that term out there, you see that increase come on your January Social Security, 
Now you kind of have a little bit of a background, a little bit of understanding where that's coming from and all of those things. Again, we this can range depending upon where things are living. There's multiple, multiple facets to where this is coming from and it's pretty complex calculation when it comes down to it. And again, remember, it's gonna be effective on your January of 2025 Social Security. So we'll keep an eye on it and see where that goes in there. That's for Social Security. Now obviously some of these other things, if you're fortunate enough to have a pension, it may or may not have a cost of living adjustment of it. And that would be something that each pension would have in that. If you're pulling income from your portfolio, as an example, if you have you know, investments and you're living off of maybe an old 401k or something that's generated a monthly income stream to you, you maybe have a plan with your financial advisor that you have kind of a cost of living adjusted into that. So you're giving yourself a little pay increase along the way. So these are all things that kind of help combat that rising cost of living for you in your retirement. Hopefully this was helpful and so you understand with your Social Security and what that COLA may be for this upcoming year. If you have questions on your Social Security, we'd love to help you out here with retiring well so you can plan to retire well. Every success story starts with a plan. The success of your retirement depends on a solid financial plan. If you are nearing retirement or already retired, we invite you to an informative live event to help you plan to retire well. There is no cost and no obligation and dinner is on us. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial professionals, specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Gaylord, Petoskey, and Cadillac. Our presentation will address pressing questions such as how will the presidential election impact my investments? What can I do to protect against inflation and in retirement? Am I tax diversified? How can I maximize my social security benefits? Will my assets be properly protected when I pass away? And much more. Call 888-608-5825 or register online and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, September 10th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Thursday, September 12th at Treetops Hunter's Grill in Gaylord. Tuesday, September 17th at Lakeside Charlie's in Cadillac. Tuesday, September 17th at JJ's Event Center in Alpena. Wednesday, September 18th at Perry Hotel in Petoskey. Or Thursday, September 19th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and tends to fill quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or register online to reserve your seats today. Don't miss this important live event to help you plan to retire well. Remember when life was simpler? When things didn't move quite so fast and the world didn't seem so complex? Remember that? We do. And as the world around us has continued to speed up, becoming more complicated and still a bit uncertain, we have managed to keep things simple, providing sound, easy to understand financial advice and customized roadmaps for the road ahead from tax reduction strategies, investment advice, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, backed by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. We can be your single point of contact, a single call, a voice you recognize well, and a partner who can be by your side for the entire journey. We can't stop the world around us, but we can help ensure you're prepared for what's to come. To schedule a no-obligation meeting, simply contact us today. Health insurance is often a huge concern for retirees, especially for those that are retiring under the age of 65 before they can get onto Medicare. You essentially have two different options. You can either go on COBRA insurance or you can go on to marketplace insurance. Now let's go and cover what the differences are between those different types of insurances and which one might be best for you. So to start, COBRA, what is it? Well, it's a continuation of your employer coverage, and typically you can continue this for up to 18 months after you retire. And then if your spouse uh, 
drops the coverage because they go into Medicare, you can actually continue it for up to 36 months there. Um, the benefits of this COBRA coverage is you're essentially continuing the same coverage that you've had your working years. So you know what the deductible is, you know what the max out of pocket is and all those different benefits. The big drawback though is COBRA insurance does typically cost a lot more as far as the premiums go. Um, I've seen it as high as over $1,000 a month for a married couple. So that is something you certainly want to make sure you're checking with your HR department on to figure out, okay, what is this actually gonna cost me when I retire? So that's one option, right, COBRA insurance. The other option would be marketplace insurance. This is essentially our government's answer to healthcare coverage under the age of 65. They created a marketplace, you can shop around um, with different insurance providers and find different plans that might fit, fit your needs. And the premiums, they're all based on your income. So if you're retiring and maybe showing a lower income, well, guess what? The premiums are gonna be a little bit lower because you're gonna qualify for a decent subsidy to help offset the cost of that health insurance. Now, with marketplace insurance, because you're paying typically a lower monthly premium, the deductibles and the max out of pockets are going to be a little bit higher than you're probably um, used to. Now, these plans, they're broken down into three different tiers. You could have a bronze plan, a silver plan, or a gold plan. Um, the bronze plan, lower premium, but higher deductible, higher out of pocket. Silver plan is more middle of the road. And then the gold plan, obviously that one's gonna cost you the most, but it's gonna have the most comprehensive coverage for you. So there's the two different options. You can either go with COBRA or marketplace insurance. But which one's best, right? Which one should you go with when you retire? Obviously, there's a lot of different variables that are associated with that, but let's just go through a quick scenario here and talk about, um, let's say that, hey, you, you're thinking about retiring midway through the year. Maybe you're not the most healthiest person that's out there and you've already maxed out your employer um, health insurance deductible. Well, in that case, you might wanna think about continuing with COBRA insurance. Why? Well, because that continues on your employer coverage. You've already maxed out that deductible. You can carry that out through the end of the year. If you were to switch and go to marketplace insurance, guess what? You'd be starting a whole new insurance plan, a whole new deductible, a whole new max out of pocket. And if you're telling me, Nick, hey, I'm not the healthiest person that's out there and you're gonna use this health insurance frequently, it's probably in your best interest to just continue on COBRA for as long as you can. But then on the flip side, if you said, you know what, Nick, I'm, I'm pretty healthy. I very rarely use my health insurance. Um, I don't think I wanna pay close to $1,000 a month for COBRA insurance. Well, then maybe in that case, uh, marketplace might be the best route to go. Um, oftentimes you can find a zero premium marketplace plan if you are showing a lower income. So there's just a high level overview on, okay, the different options that you have when you retire for health insurance. Here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we have a whole team behind the scenes that that's all they do. They specialize in health insurance. So we can walk right beside you and help go over all these different variables, crunch the numbers, and determine which option might be best for you for health insurance when you retire. So please give us a call, schedule a free, no obligation consultation. The number is right on the screen. And you can also find out a lot more information online by going to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Every success story starts with a plan. If you are nearing retirement or already retired, we invite you to an informative live event to help you plan to retire well. Our presentation will address pressing questions such as how will the presidential election impact my investments? What can I do to protect against inflation and retirement? Am I tax diversified? How can I maximize my Social Security benefits? Will my assets be properly protected when I pass away? And much more. Call 888-608-5825 or register online and choose the date and location that works best for you. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. 
but seating is limited and tends to fill quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or register online to reserve your seats today. Don't miss this important live event to help you plan to retire well. Every business says they're better. But the ones that earn and display the BBB seal back it up. It instantly identifies businesses that are committed to operating with integrity, honoring promises, and telling the truth. Makes you wonder why every business doesn't have it. So look for it, because it's looking out for you. That's why it's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Living life isn't always easy. It puts up challenges and obstacles you'll have to overcome. There are responsibilities. You put in effort to provide and take care of your family, and to save and invest, to balance work and life. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Hey, welcome to this segment on Make Your Money Behave. Hey, how can we do that? What are my options? That's why I'm going to use this whiteboard here and uh, go back to the classroom setting and have a little fun. You might want to review this because obviously there's a lot there. And so if you want to watch this again, we have a great YouTube channel. You go to youtube.com forward slash retiring well, and you can watch as many times as you would like. Let's dive in. Okay, this first make your money behave, I'm going to call C as in currency. Okay, um, it's liquid it flows, the rates are not locked in, you know, it's a short-term money, easy to get to. Maybe your emergency fund is there, uh, checking and savings account, uh, no market risk. So we can let our money just kind of float along um, with the behavior of the C. The next one is make your money behave like an escalator, okay? You're just going to ride that escalator up. Now with these products and what you have there is you get fixed rates. You know, you, uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. There's no market risk. Uh, there's no fees in these and typically you can lock your rates in from you know, anywhere from like 2 to 10 years depending on how long you want that locked in uh, rate. Um, okay, so we're just going to ride the escalator up. You can make your money behave that way. The next one is we're going to have to spend a little time on this and uh, we can't do this one without knowing the market, but we're going to call this stair step money. Okay. And so just like many of you walk up steps all the time, you can actually make your money behave like stair steps. And uh, then you have the good old roller coaster. This is what so many of you are familiar with. This is the roller coaster of risk. This is your stock market risk, bond market risk. Um, you know, when you're going from here to here, your hands are up, you're saying, this is great, we're having an awesome time. When you're going from here to here, you're probably grabbing on to anything you can hold on to and maybe even closing your eyes because, you know, that's your free fall. And so, oh, we're back on a nice ride there. And so, um, let's go through, yeah, what's, what's great about that? Well, potential returns. You know, you can have some home runs there. Um, but when you're making your money behave, every single one of those behaviors have an asterisk. Every investment has an asterisk. And so now let's talk through what the asterisks look like, and then we'll really narrow in on how these products work. Um, the first one is when you're in this currency, bank, liquid, maybe cash on hand, uh, you got to look and be aware of your rate of return. You know, I see people that uh, are getting literally nothing, 0.1%, okay, on their money. That's even liquid. And so maybe they're missing some opportunities, but you want to definitely look into what your short-term rate of return is uh, with those. Um, the asterisk on these, well, once you lock into those rates for however long uh, that time is, uh, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, well, you do have access to your money, but they're going to limit to a 10% annual free withdrawal. Uh, if you wanted to take more out, then there can be some uh, surrender charges. Um, if you say, hey, I don't want this anymore, well, then you, you know, potentially you're going to have to pay some surrender fees. So by locking it up for a little bit of time, you're going to get locked up the rate. Um, over here, 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna explain how these work. Asterisk is similar, 10% free withdrawal uh, annually, so you can take from it, you just can't take all of it without paying a little bit, and then obviously those surrender fees if you were to give it up. But um, these are now connected to the stock market. So I just chose uh, a couple of returns and I said, okay, what if the, the a year did a positive 16%, positive 5%, minus 37% and then a positive 26%. And so how these work is you can either get a 10% cap, potentially, again, I'm just using round numbers, um, or you might wanna participate with the market at let's say 60% participation. And so I just mapped over these returns over here. And so how this works is if the stock market, the S&P 500 is up 16% and you chose this 10% cap, if it was there, then you would make a 10%, so you would be up when the stock market's up. The next year, okay, but sorry, backing up one second, it's capped at 10%, okay? With the participation rate, it's 60% of 16%, which is about 9.6%, okay? So that's how that works. Over here, Positive 5%, well, you're gonna get all 5% there. If you had the participation rate, you're gonna be up about 3%. Now here's the one, negative 37%. In this situation, this is where you get a 0%. This is where you protect your principal. This is where you do not participate in the loss. Okay, over here, you took the 37% loss, over here you didn't. And then, then, oh, the next year it's up 26, so if you had a cap, you would be up 10%. You registered your cap. If you were in the participation, you, know, you might be up 15.6%. And so you can see that when the market's up, you're up, and when the market's down, you're not. So if you want help making your money behave, please give us a call here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. If you are nearing retirement or already retired, we invite you to an informative live event to help you plan to retire well. Call 888-608-5825 or register online and choose the date and location that works best for you. The live event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and tends to fill quickly. Call 888-608-5825 or register online to reserve your seats today. Seven percent of employees say that finances are the top cause of stress in their lives. This is one of many findings from a PwC survey. Human resources managers and business owners, we will partner with you to help your employees. At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we focus on education and the health of the whole person. We offer a complimentary financial wellness workshop with food provided for your team. We all want our employees to be productive at work, but most importantly, we want them to flourish in every area of their life. Let's talk a little bit about saving money when, when maybe you don't have a whole lot of extra money sitting in your savings. And as you've probably already heard, delaying savings for retirement can be detrimental. So you want to start early and, and do as best as you can to start building that retirement portfolio at an early age. So let's walk through eight helpful tips for you to consider. The first, pay yourself first. Uh, even if it's a small amount, consider the long-term impact of saving for your retirement. So again, when you get that paycheck, go ahead and assume, okay, I've got to set some money aside for, for me for the long run and build up that long-term savings. Second idea is to automate the process. So your employer may offer some type of retirement savings plan. If you, can, uh, if you don't have that, such as a 401k or simple IRA or anything like that through your employer, then you can always set one up on your own. You can open a traditional IRA or potentially a Roth IRA and have a certain dollar amount withdrawn from, uh, from your bank account in those examples and have it say pick the first of the month or whatever date it is and have that uh, start getting invested. 
Third option, get a company match. If you're, some employers may offer some type of dollar for dollar uh, match up to a certain certain amount. So as an example, let's just say if you contribute $1,000 and your employer offers a, a match up to that $1,000, now you have $2,000 in your retirement uh, account. So that is quite the return on investment if I look at that and say you put 1,000 in and now you have 2,000 just based on, on the contributions and that employer match, definitely take advantage of that. Fourth, analyze your budget. You know, a lot of times people aren't really sure where their money's going. Uh, you, you need to look at maybe your credit card statement every month and sort of see, well, wait, why, where did that money go? And, and you start to see some of the holes in your plan. Just as an example, let's assume you're, you're going to the coffee shop and getting a, a $5 coffee versus maybe making it at home for less than 50 cents. Well, if instead you just took that $5 each, each week and, and found, well, there's $20 a month that could be going towards your long-term retirement savings versus coffee. So that's a, a basic example to consider. Number five, start saving something. Uh, it's, it's valuable to learn early on to be a saver, even if it's five dollars per week as we were talking about and and then learn the benefits of compounding interest so if you put that twenty dollars a month aside and and after the course of the year now you've got you know two hundred and forty dollars that you've contributed but then if you're earning interest on that money as it goes forward that compounding effect can be so vital as you build a retirement savings uh, another idea is to increase your income. If, if you get a pay raise, uh, then what about setting aside that ad those additional funds into your retirement? So if, if you get that little bump up in pay, even though I know today's world, uh, a lot has to do with inflation and the challenges that everyone's facing there, but if possible, find a way to tuck a little extra aside. Seven, leverage windfalls. So maybe you're, you've received some type of inheritance or, or uh, it's pretty common people will find, oh, we've got a little bit of a tax refund coming uh, in the spring. Well, instead of spending those additional funds, what about finding a way to set that aside for uh, your retirement versus spending all that money that you have right, at, right then? Lastly, learn how to invest. Um, there, are, there are plenty of materials available to you uh, to start educating yourself on retirement. Uh, here's our, our uh, shameless plug here. You can go to youtube.com uh, forward slash retiring well. We have a multitude of videos and you can click there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to our website, send-wealth.com forward slash vlogs uh, forward slash, which has a, a video log of all of these different videos, typically in three, four, five minute clips that'll, that'll specifically break down for you uh, different areas of retirement planning. I, earlier, I mentioned the idea of well, should I use a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? That comes down to different tax implications depending on which one you use. And so again, we offer you those resources or you're always welcome to give us a call here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. We're happy to sit down with you and have a conversation.